that taught us how we empower people to be for themselves. And we organized ourselves with a group called Peacock, which taught us a systematic way of how to organize, how for us to be organized, and how to organize people to move, to change systems. We weren't about to make just a difference, we wanted to change systems so that our people were part of the system of change, especially with politicians and all those other folks. So we began before the hurricane to do many different kinds of actions. We were the, one of the um, most, um, well, my house, I could hear gunshots almost every night uh, from, from my house. Uh, we had a, a high crime rate. We had a low, very, low, uh, un, uh, very low employment. Uh, most of our folks were unskilled laborers. They worked in hotels as domestics. And they worked cooking and taking care of laundry. But there were no junior executives. There were no senior executives. There were no professional peoples that, that, that were skilled and trained to take care of the things that we had. We, we had a very, one of the poorest school systems in the country. Out of 50 states, uh, Louisiana is the 49th in terms of education. So our school system was deplorable. We had our own school, it was the only school that had any success within the committee, but all the other public schools were all failing schools. Who goes to those schools? The children of our the community. We're not the white children, we're not the other folks, they're all African American children in these schools, failing schools, and so we wonder why we were doing what we did, because we were just generating the same thing over and over and over again. There had to be a change in how we do business, and how we do work within our communities. So uh, because of that, we began to have actions and, 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 and organizing ourselves. And, and, and it takes time, it takes a lot of discipline, it, it takes a lot of listening, it takes a lot of research, it takes a lot of, of understanding where we want to channel what action that we want to have. And before that, we're going to listen to stories. So we listen to many, many thousands of stories before we did any action. We listened to what were the dreams of people, what were their hopes, what were their vision, what would they like to see, where would they like to see schools or grocery stores or banks or post offices or, or education places or places that have to, to go to eat or grocery stores that they could afford, not these little tiny markets that are overpriced where people were being charged on a card uh, to have, a, uh, it's almost like an old slavery days where we had cards and you could pay uh, the store owner uh, on, your, on your tab, but you never paid off your tab. Uh, those are the corner stores that we have. We needed other kind of ways that people could, could buy and have things of value. So we began to <laughs> listen to the dreams and the goals of people. Not one, but we listened to over a thousand stories. And in those stories, we began to then hear what are the actions or what are the problems that we see and what are some winnable ways that we can gain power with. Because this is how do you, how do you gain power. How do you gain power in your community with a politician, with a system that's there. So we began to, to listen to those stories and began to, like a big old funnel, hear them all and then push them in the funnel, push them in, so that we could have one or two that we were going to organize ourselves about to find how we can make a change. So we began to do that, not only with our own church, but we had about 18 churches that were doing, and synagogues, and, 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 uh, and mosques that were there. So the imams were with us, the, the rabbis were with us, the, uh, the Christian pastors were with us, <coughs> together to how to uh, elicit a change and how to have a better quality of life for all of our people, for everybody. And so, um, so each pastor began to do their own things in their own churches, listening to stories and finding out where things were and, and, what, and what would take place and how would we go about doing that? Who do we need to, to, to target to get these answers to? So that we could then begin to have a citywide action or a parishwide action to make a change within the community. I'll give you an example of one. We, we organize our young people. Young folks have lots of ways that they... So, from different uh, counties, what we call counties in New Orleans, we call them parishes, not 
religious parishes, but civil parishes. Well, in the civil parishes and in the religious parishes, we began to gather people from different denominations of young people, and they started telling us what they saw in their schools and what they saw around them and what they were going on in the schools, where some of our kids, believe it or not, did each have their own textbooks. No wonder we're failing. Not even textbooks in the school for every child. We began to see that they didn't have decent bathrooms. Someone had to bring their own toilet tissue to school because the school didn't provide these opportunities. Uh, we, they, they, they began to, to bring other things to school. And so they were upset with that, why they didn't have these things. They wanted jobs in the summer because they had nothing to do. They had no recreation places to go. And so there was no places for them to recreate or to express themselves. So they decided that they were going to call the mayor. <laughs> so we help our young folks to organize themselves about what issues would you ask me or what would you want to see. Begin to talk to the recreation department, begin to talk to the summer employment, the folks for that, that hire young people, we begin to talk to the superintendent of the schools, or why the, and we began to get answers <coughs> to what was taking place, but they were not, they were not comprehensive answers. So our thinking is, you go into a, to an office acting stupid, but you're really not, and you come out very smart, because you ask all kinds of questions, and you find all, then you find the real answer, because not everybody tells the truth all the time. So you begin to find different things. So we decided we'd have an action with the kids. We had about 120 kids. We had, we had ABC, NBC, CBS News, local affiliates in the city. Uh, we had a live telecast. The mayor came, he was a half hour late. Kids were upset with the mayor. They told the mayor, I know where you were, you were downtown handling gambling to make gambling come into the city, but you forgot us. We are your next voting people. And so we began to tell the mayor, we began to tell the superintendent that it was deplorable that they didn't have things in the school system for them to learn by, or jobs. And so that was our first, one of our first actions for the kids. By the end of the summer, by the middle of the summer, when the kids went back to school in the fall, working with the, the public school department, working with the mayor, working with his team, working with all those folks, new textbooks in the school. Mm -hmm. They somehow found new money. Mm -hmm. uh, the kids began to have some jobs. Not all of them, but began to find some ways to uh, have summer jobs with the kids. Mm -hmm. Some of the recreation departments were open. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. things happen. That's what organizing does. It empowers these young people. These young people, when they finish with the mayor that day, they ask him to meet with them in 30 days. They ask the mayor to come back in 120 days so they could see what the reactions were. So there was an accountability on the mayor and accountability on the people that were there. Mm -hmm. And so what happens when this takes place, you see that when people come together with one purpose in mind, there's power. And power to power makes change. The mayor has power, we have power. We have to energize our power to gain a larger power. And that power is about our people. That power makes that makes, that changes systems. So this is what organizing does. It helps to create a change in systems. But you've got to listen to a 